Okay, now we have our base layers in Arc, and so first thing let's do is if you come over to the table of contents and click on the layers and go to prop, right click on it and go to properties, you can click on the coordinate system tab and we can see what is the coordinate system of the whole project, which may not be the same as the individual files that are in there. Um, and so, but they're all being displayed using this NAD83 UTM zone 12 uh, north projection. So, okay, that's good. And NAD83 is a pretty up to date uh, datum, so we should be okay. So, um, now let's go ahead and start georeferencing. So, um, what you want to do is pull this file in from our website and this is the geologic map of Meteor Crater so you can see it's the main crater and about one a little bit less than one diameter uh, north and south and uh, even a little bit less than that on, on the side so this is just the PNG file it has no georeferencing so how do we get it to sit in our map so what we do then is go to uh, ArcGIS and I've, I've already uploaded that file into my apps or into my files and I can get at it in my apps so I add it Let's make some pyramids now it says you don't have any spatial reference information we say yes we know that's what we're doing now it doesn't appear at first you see it in the table of contents and that's okay because it doesn't know where to draw it um, and especially right now because the coordinate system for that uh, scanned image geologic map is just in basically in inches uh, of the graphic itself so it's not going to be what we want so let's get the georeferencing geo toolbar out so click on customize toolbars georeferencing and it's really you can grab this toolbar let's move it around a little bit so it says it's georeferencing the layer is that one you have to be very careful because once in a while you'll end up georeferencing one of your already referenced files it's very annoying so we know we should probably zoom in a little bit because that's too far and let's turn off the DOQs because it turns out you'll see that this map uh, has some was mapped on the topographic base and so there are some key features we can work with so if you click then under georeferencing we can fit to display and so there our map appears and we can toggle it on and off so let's zoom down here to the left side and if I toggle the layer on and off I can see uh -huh, it looks to me like there's a common um, intersection of two township and range lines so now we click on georeferencing and I'll get this little thing which is add control points and what we're going to do is add a series of control points of connections between the, un the control point on the unknown map to the control point on the known map and once we put enough of these in we can then use them to apply a transformation to the entire image and warp it or rectify it into the coordinate system of our project so what you do is you get that tool out you click once on the feature then you turn it off go and find that same target and now we turn our map back on and what you'll see is it's moved it but it hasn't scaled it so let's zoom out a little bit and what's really important is your strategy to kind of cover the map first just think you're sewing you don't want to sew too close you want to go to the far other parts of the map so let's come in here it's a distinctive uh, jog in the township and range lines ah, and there it is there so let's take the upper one right here and then connect down there now you can see oh interesting look at that it's already scaled the file we need to put a few more in so now let's just keep stitching this together here's another target and you see it's not perfect but and that's why we need to keep adding these control points click this one okay now we're getting somewhere let's go down to the lower lower right of the map maybe find an intersection 
over here, there's another jog. Now it's looking pretty good. Zoom in. I'll zoom to the layer, uh, the geologic map, and I've got, you can see I've got one, two, three, four points in, so not too bad. It would be nice to get some more. Let's see if we can zoom in and find some features in the geology itself or in the topography. So if I turn this thing, this on and off. One thing I can see is over here, there's a kind of a head of a drainage that comes in and it looks like it might be just a little bit over. So this is what really an important lesson is that you can use any thing uh, as, a, as a control point so you don't just have to use those known features. Let's look at the museum. Maybe there's something there we can do. Oh yeah. And if you look at the side, the corner of the museum maybe right here. Looks like it might need to be moved over a little bit. And now you can see that it's not perfect. You see there's a blue connector. So now we're starting to have um, some distortion or we're not able to match every single one. And, and that's a, a game you end up playing with the georeferencing, georeferencing program. And there are some ways we can improve that. Let's look around and see, maybe there's some more targets. Now let's turn on the DOQs and maybe we'll see some more items. One thing you can see is there's a, a junction here at this road intersection. Let's just pick the very center of that road intersection and we can see that uh, maybe it can be moved over a little bit. Let's keep looking. Okay. There's been some changes over time, so that's one thing we have to be careful about. Okay, let's go let's go and look for some other features to match on the edge of the map. Look for all that you can. Interpreting. This is a bit trickier. Maybe there's some of it geology we can see the how about this curve of the contact there yeah if you go right here and we can connect to here so let's zoom to our layer again turn on the thing there we've got one two three four five six seven eight control points if I click here I get the list of them it's called the link table and this is where you could delete one if you wanted. Like, see, there's a 13, there's a residual or error 13 meters. You know, we could get rid of it, but I'm I'm going to keep it because I, I maybe it's not so bad. Here's a 14 meter. You can see that the transformation here uses a first order. It's just a linear stretch and rotation. If we once we get a few more points, like we have now about 10, we can use the second order. And that does a little bit of a nonlinear warping. You can see the edges of the map now. But overall, RMS generally went down a bit. And you see the summary, the root mean square is about uh, 5.8. So let's let's accept that. We can always try this again. So if we think we're done, we go to georeferencing, and we want to rectify. So it's going to give us a cell size of about one meter. We can use nearest neighbor. You can experiment. Uh, versus cubic, maybe we should try cubic. Uh, output location, I actually don't want to put it just right there. I'm going to keep it in this directory. Um, that's the output location, it's not the output name. Now this is the GMC map 1, let's call it uh, GeoRef. And say save. Now we don't we don't really get much feedback that it's done, but if we wait a little while, then we can add data, and there is the file. And now, if I turn off our old one, we can see the georeferenced one. 
zoom in and turn things on and off. Seems okay. Could be a bit better, but zoom to layer. So once I, if I think I'm done with the other one, I just right click on it and remove it, and that trashes those control points. But here's the rectified one.